good day it's Calgary Biker here today I'm going to talk to you about my 2006 Harley Davidson V rod street rod model the VRSCR so to give you some background the V rod uh, street rod model differs from the standard V rod in a few critical ways uh, the first big big difference is the fact that it comes with factory standard controls so basically right below the seat instead of way up here in that long stretched forward typical Harley uh, clamshell type of position so first of all that that riding uh, position gives you a lot more control over the motorcycle or at least as far as I'm concerned the, the second big thing um, in terms of difference is the ground clearance uh, so in particular it's got considerably more suspension travel at the back and at the front with the Shawa inverted fork from the factory that in combination with the peg position means that it's got a 40 degree lean angle which for a Harley is absolutely incredible and certainly for most public roads at most reasonable speeds it's more than enough ground clearance so definitely the most sporty of all of the Harley factory models anyway with the exception perhaps of some of the sportsters that's got increased ground clearance. That being said, um, the motor in the V-Rods, the 1133 cc in this particular case for 2006, uh, is far and beyond the most powerful engine Harley makes. Um, Water-cooled instead of air-cooled, dual overhead cam, all of the type of technology you'd expect in a current motorcycle. Um, producing well over 100 horsepower to the rear tire. So combination of that power, this chassis, the suspension means it's a heck of a lot of fun to ride fast on twisty roads. In fact the machine begs to be ridden and the more you push it the more it wants you to push it. Which cannot be said for pretty much any any Harley. So that's uh, some of the, the key things that I really like about the bike. That being said, I've done some customization to it. The biggest customization I've done is to the rear. So the tail light, uh, there used to be a big plastic uh, piece along the bottom that had the signal lights and the license plate bracket. I actually broke one of the signal lights off while moving the machine. So that prompted me to basically eliminate all of that plastic along the bottom, get an integrated tail light with LED uh, brake and signal lights built in. And then as a result of that, I had nowhere to put the license plate, so I built a side mount license plate bracket along the side as well, complete with LED lighting uh, to make it legal and really cleans up the back end. Looks really sporty, shows off the decent but not too big rear tire uh, along the back. Second thing that I did to the bike is it came when I bought it with tab performance straight pipes which sounded really awesome if you weren't actually on the bike but while on the bike it was just way too loud. Maybe I'm just getting old but oh my god it was basically unbearable. So I got a uh, set of uh, Harley-Davidson factory V-Rod pipes. These particular uh, slip-ons were actually from a night rod. Um, so it's kind of a brushed aluminum instead of chrome. But with the tips that I replanted black, I think it looks really awesome. So now it sounds pretty decent, much quieter, and uh, much more rideable. I don't have to wear earplugs now every time that I ride the machine. So that was definitely a, a nice uh, a nice change as well. The other things that this bike has are the the Willie G Harley Davidson skull grips, as well as the Willie G Harley Davidson side mirrors, which look really cool. From a functionality standpoint, the mirrors are pretty much as useless as the factory ones are. They're not great, but uh, like most Harleys. 
uh, you get a, a little bit more style as opposed to function. So style trumps function. Another element of the, the V-Rod models, in particular the street rod, where the style trumps the function is with regard to the instrument cluster. So you can see the instrument cluster is uh, relatively small. The font makes it a little bit difficult to read. It looks really, really cool, but as you're riding the bike, it's a big held, head tilt down just to see what's on there. It's kind of hard to read. You do get used to it, but it's a little trickier to read. And at the, I'm six foot two, so at the angle that I look down at, I can't even read the full odometer, tripometer, uh, as well as I can only see about half of the, uh, the numbers in the system. So, um, once again, not a big deal, but uh, definitely something that if I were to change it, it would spoil the look of the bike. So... I'm not going to, but uh, it's just one of those things that if you're purchasing a machine like this, you need to know about. Also, the fuel cell is underneath the seat. The tank is not a tank, it's an airbox cover. The fuel beneath the seat for the 2006 model, and the street rod actually holds five gallons of fuel, um, which is good. And uh, yeah, so it's got a fairly decent range to it. By the time you run out of uh, fuel, given the seat you're pretty much ready to get off and stretch your sure legs anyway so even if I could go further on a tank of gas I'd still want to get off and stretch my legs so um, the seat and the fuel tank capacity match which is uh, which is all right I guess so anyway that is uh, the quick and dirty with regard to uh, the street rod uh, model of the V rod I think, in my opinion, it's uh, the best bike that Harley has really ever made. Quite frankly, it has the performance with that uh, liquid-cooled 1130cc motor, tons of horsepower, it likes to rev, it begs to be revved. It's not like your typical air-cooled Harley where all sorts of torque, torque like crazy, but runs out of steam and runs out of breath fairly quickly. Um, definitely designed to be cruised as opposed to ridden hard. This one's designed to be ridden hard, which, uh, which I really like. So, uh, anyway, that's my uh, quick little overview of the street rod. Oh, um, this was also uh, the first Harley to include Brembo brakes. Uh, they brand them theirs, but they're actually Brembo brakes. Dual uh, brakes up front with steel braided lines from the factory. Excellent, excellent stopping power. Once again, not something that you can say of a lot of Harleys, but uh, it's got superb stopping power, um, good feel, um, not a lot of initial bite, but very progressive, uh, feels good to the hand, and easy to modulate with uh, more, as much power as you need for a machine like this. The only thing really limiting this and slowing it down is the fact that it's quite a long bike. And it is a heavy bike as well. It's a 600-pound uh, machine, almost six feet long. So it's that that size and weight that means that this is certainly no sport bike by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, that being said, for an older guy like me that likes to ride in a sporting and uh, quick style fashion, loves the twisty roads. This is an absolutely perfect compromise. I'm a big guy, well over 200 pounds, over six foot tall, six foot two in fact. The machine fits me beautifully. I don't mind the weight, carries it fairly low. And uh, while it's certainly flickable is not a word that I would use to describe it, it definitely loves to corner carve. And if you actually scrape a peg on this machine, that's pretty damn good. They deserve to be called hero pigs in this machine, at least the way I drive anyway, um, with my skill level. Certainly, uh, I don't run the risk of any dragging any hard parts on the machine. So, Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, just uh, uh, send me a message and uh, that sort of thing. But uh, over and out.